Hey everybody, uh, I've uh, been, been away for a, a few days, so maybe I'm making up for it by doing a few videos all at the same time. I'm John Hope Bryant, founder, chairman, and chief executive officer of Operation Hope, America's only national nonprofit uh, financial services network for the poor, the underserved, and the struggling middle class, folks with too much month at the end of their money. Uh, so whether you're black, white, red, brown, or yellow, you probably want to see some more green. That means you, that means me. Green as in U.S. currency if you're outside of the United States, as we have national, we have viewers from all around the world internationally. Uh, this piece is uh, uh, personal to me. I'm going to do uh, several pieces this week uh, to catch up uh, on my trip to the Middle East, etc. I'm going to do one more video after this, so the three for, for today. Uh, I see you signing in uh, below. Hello, Zach Smith. Uh, thank you for your service, sir. Thank you very much. I see 25 other folks just signed in. Hello, Kevin Benet, my friend Kevin. Uh, Larry Jones, hello from Whiteville, North Carolina. Yay! Um, uh, uh, Tony uh, Sellers uh, uh, from uh, Augusta, Georgia. Najee Ali, my brother Najee, who's just such a wonderful asset in Los Angeles. I hope you're healing properly, brother, from cancer. What a survivor this guy is. Um, Keong Hassan, uh, thanks for your help. Um, Kochita Jackson, uh, Byron Dees uh, from Baltimore. Uh, Tyrone Bay Henson. Okay, so I'll come back. Uh, some other, John Mo Moiby from London. So we got London in the house. Chicago's checking in. King Blue Zachary. Okay, so uh, this uh, piece uh, is on Black America. Uh, so one of the reasons uh, my phone's ringing, I'm not going to answer it because I'm talking to you. So um, by the way, for those of you who don't know me, I'm sorry. CEO of Operation Hope, founder uh, of Brian Ventures, also author of How the Poor Can Save Capitalism: Rebuilding the Path to the Middle Class, a bestseller in the world, translated into five languages. Now coming out in Brazil in Portuguese. Uh, just came out in Korea uh, and other places. Uh, Love Leadership, book before that. So Black America needs a business plan. What is this about? Um, one of the reasons I keep trying in these video series, in, in these little bite-sized pieces, to get parts of our black community uh, and parts of the broader community, because really Donald Trump is speaking to pain in the white uh, rural community, white, male, high school educated, pissed off, frustrated, because the economy walked away from them. 40, 50 years ago, and now they want retribution. If they really want, they really should have an economy that works in their small town. And what we should have done is help them rebuild that economy in that small town. We didn't. They feel uh, maligned and disrespected, uh, and they feel that Donald Trump is speaking for them, which he's not. He's just playing on their, uh, just playing with them. But uh, he's playing on their fears and insecurities and their emotions and mostly their pockets. They think he's going to solve their problems. He's not. Donald Trump is for Donald Trump. But, but, you know, we can't be concerned about if somebody else's business plan is screwed up, i.e. Donald Trump's playing on uh, his uh, popularity base, uh, so-called popularity base. We've got to be concerned about uh, ourselves and get ourselves right. Charity starts at home. So when the plane is going down, I just got off of a long plane flight. It's 600,000 miles a year. 600,000. When the plane is going down, the flight attendant will tell you, put the oxygen mask on your face first and then your child. Because if you can't save you, you can't save them. Charity starts at home. So, Black America, for whom I love, I'm, not, I'm uh, for everybody, but I'm passionate, and, and you'll see a, quite a quarter of this series is about a business plan, really, for Black America. And one of the reasons I keep talking to us and, and sort of loving these tough terms and, and then getting this sort of vitriolic, sort of negative response from about 3% of the people who comment is I think that we are depressed. I think that after all that we've gone through, we're depressed as a people, 250 years of slavery, 100 years of Jim Crow, ending in 1960, 1970. We have every reason to be clinically undiagnosed, depressed, or be stre stressing from PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, which normally comes after uh, one goes through war. And I think if you grew up in the inner city, you've probably been through a war syndrome your entire life. So I think, and I've said it before, that 70% of black Americans are clinically undiagnosed depressed. Now, what does that have to do with today's topic? We've got to get healing. And now, when the therapist starts pricking at you, starts talking about things that you have not dealt with for five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, your entire life, you've been hiding them, putting them under a blanket, you know, trying to be cool and, and acting like it doesn't exist. When somebody finally touches that, boom, you attack them. So you attack the therapist. Uh, and, f and we go to a therapist for lack of a friend. We go to the therapist for lack of a friend who we can talk to. So I don't mind folks uh, jumping bad at me because that's, they don't know me. It's not about me. It's about their own pain. Uh, but we need to deal with this pain. Okay, so what does that have to do with our business plan? We've had a black president. We have a black president. We have a great president, I'm sorry, who happens to be African-American. 
If he was a black president, he'd be a one-term president. A president for all people who happens to be black. It's a bad brother. I don't agree with him on everything, but I, I, he's had not had one, one uh, uh, um, uh, 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 what's the word, uh, disaster in his administration uh, in, in in his entire when we have had a president that did not have some kind of controversy, some kind of implosion uh, during his term uh, one year, one term no, two terms in the last 50 years we've not had a president who did not have some uh, crisis and he has not had a crisis I commend him for that. But what have we done with eight years of him being president? Barack Obama. We've complained <laughs> we've become the chief complaining party we've got Black Lives Matter, we've got you know, we're against the police. We're, you know, I know you're going to not like this, but this is the facts. We've spent eight years doing public therapy. <laughs> we wasted our entire, we got this, got the Dr. King, Civil Rights Movement, uh, Andrew Young, John John Lewis, uh, Dr. Dorothy Height, all these heroes, and Dr., you know, Credit Scott King, all these heroes and sheroes gave their lives so that we might have Frederick Douglass, Harriet Tubman, you know, all this stuff to get us to a point where we finally have in office, a African American, a person of African American descent who's president, and what do we do with eight years? Become the chief complaining party. <laughs> this is why I keep talking to us to get us out of this pain deal and out of this anger deal, which doesn't solve anything. I, you know, wherever this why you comments, I always say this: they never respond. The negative attitude has that got you anywhere? The complaining has that got you anywhere? The the the, the drama has that got you anywhere? And watch how you live your life. It may be the only Bible that anybody else reads. So your children are watching you do that. Is that what you want for your child? Is that the image you want your children to see? Is that how you want them to grow up? Is that the attitude you want them to have? That America is bankrupt, all white men are the devil, you know, or whatever it is you're spouting. Or, you know, this is all a game system. Your children are listening to this rhetoric. And they're going to grow up with hopelessness, hopeless, just like you. But put that aside, because I'm not in charge of how you raise your children. I'm not in charge of anything in your life. But what have we done for eight years, almost eight years of President Obama being in office? We have had public therapy. The world now absolutely know we are pissed off. <laughs> we, are, we are tired of, of being racism, discrimination, and all that. Okay, great. I understand. But life is 10% what life does to you and 90% how you choose to respond to it. The question is not whether you've been oppressed, depressed, stressed, uh, leaned on, leaned against, walked on. The question is, what are you doing about it? What did Dr. King say in 1968 in Memphis, Tennessee? That, that a man can't walk on your back unless you're bent over. So put your shoulders back, your, your chest out, your, your back up, and walk like a man and, respect, and demand your respect and dignity. Play this game, master this game, and let the game master you. So what we should have done for the last seven years, going on eight years, is had a round table of business leaders, black business leaders in the White House every week. What we should have done is been writing letters to the president, to every court, you know, we want we want to know what the contracts are in the Department of, of Defense. We want to know what the contracts are in Homeland Security. We want to know what the contracts are in the Department of Commerce. We want we want an economic agenda. We want to talk about home ownership again. We want to talk about small creating a, a generation of small business owners a generation of black and brown entrepreneurs. We want to create jobs in these communities. We should have had block by block, community by community, city by city, state by state, before state by state, county by county, a coalition, a new coalition for, the, for, uh, for good, calling it civil rights. That's not in the streets. It's in the suites. The last movement was in the streets, civil rights. It was won. It was about race and the color line. The rules changed, everybody. The 21st century came and the, move, the movement moved from race and the color lines to class and poverty. That's why I'm saying in poverty. So it's not about civil rights in the streets. Yes, that's important. We, need, we still need soldiers on the field doing that. NAACP and others are absolutely critical. But we have to build on that to have civil rights in the suites. We need jobs. The best way to stop a bullet, so says my friend Van Jones, is a job. Ferguson's problems are ultimately no jobs. Baltimore's problems, the riots there, ultimately no jobs. South Central LA, ultimately no jobs. ISIS is recruiting in the Middle East because people don't have jobs. You're stressing in your household because of money. Because you don't have a job, somebody doesn't have a job in your house, or doesn't have a good enough job. But, but the number one issue for divorce and, and, and domestic abuse is money. The number one reason why women stay with abusive men is money. Nobody woke up in the morning and said, I want to be a prostitute. <laughs> They're being a prostitute because of money. 
She, of course she wants a dignified life. No woman uh, says, uh, let me be a, a, a stripper. And of course she, she, she doesn't want to be a stripper. It's about money. Nobody wakes up and says, ooh, let me be a criminal, all right? He wants to get paid, and, and he unfortunately believes that's the only way to do it. None of that stuff is sustainable. None of that stuff's going to work. So we have wasted seven and a half, almost eight years of, a, of, 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 of probably the, the only time ever uh, of a presidency on what we are against, not what we are for. You cannot become an expert at what you're against and expect that to work. You've got to become an expert at what you're for and then do something about it. You can't be a victim for a living. You can't be angry for a living. You can't even be black for a living. I love black people. You, can't be, you need to have a trade. You need to have an expertise. You need to add value. And you can be upset with me all you want, but there's not one uh, uh, example in all the long arc of history that sustains a business plan built on hate, victimization, uh, and checking out and saying I'm against. Nothing. No, no one's ever won that way. So here's what I want us to do. I want you to go to Operation Hope and I want you to sign up to become a volunteer. I'm going to ask you to be a member that costs a lot of money. I'm trying to get my rich friends to do that. So I'm going to ask you to write a check. Go volunteer. Become the role model you want to see in your neighborhood. The book The Tipping Point says that if 5% of role models every community stabilizes, not 80% of role models, not 50% of role models, not even 10 5% of role models, a community stabilizes. Why am I a businessman? My daddy was. Why do I love myself? My mother told me to. I'm not a rocket scientist. I'm role modeling, just like you. If you're wearing a suit, you're wearing a suit because you saw somebody wear a suit. If you're a, a black woman who's working her tail off, uh, probably in a single a parent household, you're doing it because you saw your mother or your auntie, and you said, I can do that. And the problem with our role models is they're all screwed up. The problem with our environment is that it is all screwed up. If you hang around nine broke people, I guarantee you, you'll be the tenth. If you hang around nine broke people, I guarantee you, you'll be the tenth. So it's not that you don't have a reason to be angry. It's not that you don't have a reason to be pissed. It's not that you don't have a reason to, to, be, to be utterly through with uh, the history of this country. Yes, I give you all that. But now what? Now what? Because we're, time is ticking. When Obama leaves office, we're going to be in real trouble. We lead everything negative you can imagine. Dropout rates, we lead it. High school dropout rates. Uh, single parent households run by black women. We lead that. That's not good. Black men not taking care of their children. Yeah, I said it. We lead that. My, one of, I'm not going to call her out. One of my members of my family said that she had, was black was trying to get the dude who got her pregnant to take care of the child. He's like arguing, oh, you know. Uh, you know, why are you pressing me on, on uh, child support? That's just the system. That's the man. He's going to take the money. She says, it's not the man. I'm the one man taking care of your little man that you had because you're not a man. And you need to write a check so I can produce a man and stop being the anti-man and start talking about the man is keeping you from being a man. Write a check. He didn't write the check. He get, just ran his mouth some more. So she went down and filed for child support and she's getting it. And, 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 oh, but he didn't pay. She's got bills to pay. She's got to take care of this little kid. What are we doing? What are we doing? So I want you to become a Hope Corps volunteer. I want you to become a mentor in a school. I want you to, uh, to, to volunteer. So boy, Boys and Girls Club, if it's not operational, the Urban League, the, you know, find something in your neighborhood, the, the YMCA, the WMCA, find 5% of your life should be about giving back. It's not just about you. Don't you want to have a legacy? Of course you do, by the way. Don't you want the world to know you were here? Of course you do. Don't you want to have footprints in the sand that says that God, Lord Almighty, my family, I have a legacy, and I gave more than I got? Of course you do. So let's become the solution that we want to see in the world. Let's become a net contributor because the black American brand at the moment is getting really screwed up. Nobody wants to hire us because they think we're going to protest in their lobby. <laughs> they think that all we do is complain. We're the chief complaining party, but we are brilliant. We are amazing. We've been doing so much with so little for so long. We can almost do anything with nothing. We, we've come from slavery to be president of the United States of America in less than 400 years. I mean, we are stunning. We are amazing. We produce some of the wealthiest, most brilliant, most amazing artists and champions and heroes and sheroes and athletes in the world. But I don't want to just rock a mic. I don't want to just bounce a basketball. I want to own the basketball stadium. I want you to own 
the NBA team. Don't just be satisfied with working for the NBA team. I want you to, to write a check and not just cash a check. There's a difference. When you write the check, you're an employer. When you cash the check, you're an employee. I want us to understand free enterprise and capitalism because money is not evil. It's the love of money that's evil. It's the greed that's evil. I'm going to do a whole video about we hate rich people. No, you don't. You don't hate rich people. You hate rich people till you become rich. <laughs> what you hate is a game system. What you hate are people who's pimping you. What you hate is uh, people who are abusing you. Jesus talked about uh, money in the Bible. He talked about the, the money changers who were corrupt in the temple. So did the prophet Muhammad uh, uh, in uh, the Quran. Uh, all these religions talk about uh, money is not bad. It's the love of money is bad. You can use free enterprise also to set you free and to set your people free by creating jobs and opportunity for you, yourself and for them. Andrew Young, Ambassador Andrew Young, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s right arm of the civil rights root movement and my good friend and mentor said to live in a system of free enterprise and not to understand the rules of free enterprise must be the very definition of slavery. Yeah. To live in a system of free enterprise and not to understand the rules of free enterprise must be the very definition of slavery, which is why I keep pivoting on these 500 credit score neighborhoods where we have a check cash next to a payday loan lender, next to a rental home store, next to a title lender, next to a liquor store, and I'm tired of it. They are robbing us in broad daylight. As Malcolm X would say, we've been bamboozled, we've been tricked, we've been, we've been fooled. And I'm tired of it. Uh, you know, somebody once said that Harriet Tubman, actually she didn't say it, but it was said about her, that if she would have saved many more slaves, they'd only known they were slaves. We have slavery in the in our inner city neighborhoods. I'm tired of it. I'm gonna raise, I'm gonna do my part by opening hope inside locations to raise credit scores 120 points in 24 months because nothing changes your life more than God or love and moving your credit score. 120 points. <laughs> Set yourself free. Become an entrepreneur, small business owner, own a home, whatever it is, but you have optionality at that point, you have opportunity. And I want to go corner to corner, block, block, block. I want to find the, the Steve Jobs in every neighborhood because you know we have a bunch of little Steve Jobs running around our neighborhoods who are, who are looking like drug dealers, but really they're, really they're just corrupt entrepreneurs. They, they have entrepreneurial genius. They're using their talents for the wrong thing. I don't want to be president. I'm not being political. I'm not running for office. Okay, be clear. I don't want to be governor. I don't want to be mayor. I don't want to be assemblyman. I don't want to be U.S. senator. I'm not running for anything. I, I want to, I'm running for you. I'm running to you. I want to, and I will build a platform for hope and, and economic opportunity, hope business in a box academies, creating entrepreneurs from young little kids in middle school and high school, give them a $500 award to become, uh, a, when they have a good idea and they pitch it, uh, like Shark Tank for kids, uh, uh, and have them open a bank account, become an entrepreneur, and then measure their economic uh, activity and see them uh, come alive. There's a video on that if you want to watch it. Hope Inside for adults, raising credit scores to 700, robbing of these financial predators of their customers in broad daylight, robbing the check cashers and payday loan lenders and rent to own stores and title lenders of their customers in broad daylight using the free enterprise system to set people free. I'm not going to pick at you. I'm not going to call you on your names. I'm going to steal your customers by educating them and helping them to set themselves free. And that's what you should want. You should want to be free. The new definition of freedom in the 21st century is self-determination. So we're going to build on civil rights and create a new movement of civil rights. And we're going to, we're going to, we're going to demand our respect and dignity. And, be, and as I've always said, I never want a, a butt next to my name. I don't want anybody to say, I love John Bryan, but I think John Bryan's cool, but I would invest with John Bryan, but I would invest with Operation Hope, but I would support Operation Hope, but I spent my whole life removing the butt. Operation Hope today is a four-star charity navigator organization, which means that we're one of the top quartile nonprofits in the entire country, where, where literally 81 cents of every dollar goes to help somebody change their lives, and 19 cent pays for useless things like me, but that is the top of all, that puts us at the best in class of every nonprofit in the country, because I never wanted somebody uh, to say but next to my name, or to have an excuse to, to walk me off the field of life. I don't want anybody to have an excuse to walk you off the field of life by saying you're an angry black man or you're an angry black woman or you're, you're disturb, disturbing the corporate environment. Or No, no, no. Look, step over mess, not in it. <laughs> okay? Don't rearrange the deck chairs in the Titanic. Don't win the battle and lose the war. Keep your temper. Keep your cool. 
right? Don't respond, don't, don't react, respond to life. Smile at the devil. Call him a punk. That's all he is. And walk right over him, around him, through him, and go to your destiny of a new you. So, Hope Business Box Academies, Internship America, Hope Inside, Hope Coalition America, 700 credit score communities, creating a generation of entrepreneurs and small business owners. This is what we should have demanded during the, the Obama presidency. It's not his fault. This is not, I'm not, this is not about Obama. The president responds to us. We should have delivered this agenda and been about something other than complaining for eight years. because.